that fills the presence of this meeting, we thank you, Lord. Only you knows what we are set to accomplish today, and only you can see the perfect detail in every end and every beginning. Your righteousness transcends our efforts and understanding. Forgive us for our pride that threatens to unqualify us. Strengthen our confidence in you who have made us to be. Bless this meeting today, all those present, as well as the lives of those we will encounter after work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The chair would now start the roll-up calls. Mr. Chair, I move to um, dispense with the roll. Second. Upon motion, duly seconded. The calling of the roll is dispensed with. And uh, at this point, we will go to the approval of the minutes of the previous committee meeting. Mr. Chair, I move for the approval of the previous meeting. So move, Mr. Mr. Chair. Second. Upon uh, motion, duly seconded, the reading of the previous committee meeting is dispensed with, and the same is approved. Good morning, everyone. The chair would like to recognize the following distinguished house members who are present today. I recognize the presence of Honorable Stella Luz Kimbo, Second District of Marikina. Also the presence of Honorable Josephine J. Laxon Well, Lone District of Malabon. And uh, over Zoom, I recognize the presence of Honorable Bonifacio Bosita, one rider party list. Honorable Yuloyo Rodriguez, Lone District of Catanduanes. Honorable Jenny Jet Nisay of uh, Pusong Pinoy party list. Honorable J.C. Abalos of Four Peace Party List. Honorable Deputy Majority Leader. Honorable Janet Garin of First District Iloilo. Honorable Ernesto Janicio Jr. of First District Manila. Honorable Laarni Roque of 4th District, Bukid Non. Honorable Adrian Advincula, 3rd District, Cavite. Honorable Maria Carmen Zamora, of 1st District, District Davao de Oro. Honorable Jocelyn Tulfo, of AXCIS, Partalist. Honorable Maria Lucille, Nava, Long District of Guimaras. Honorable Franz Pomarin of 3rd District, Quezon City. Honorable Rodolfo Ordanes of Senior Citizens Party List. Honorable Daphne Lagon of 6th District, Cebu City. Honorable Eleanor. Bulut Begtang of Long District of Apayao. Honorable Dante Garcia, 2nd District La Union. Honorable Agustina Pancho, 2nd District Bulacan. Honorable Florida Robes of San Jose del Monte City. Honorable Ricardo Cruz, 1st District Taguig Pateros. Honorable 
Charis Ann Hernandez of Long District, Calamba City. Honorable Wilter Palma, First District, Sambanga, Sibugay. Honorable Salvador Plato, Second District, Sixth District, Bulacan. Honorable Maria Janina, Jamina Catherine Agarao of Fourth District, Laguna. And Honorable Ruth Mariano Hernandez of Second District, Laguna. So at this point, we'd like to recognize, uh, the chair would like to recognize the presence of our resource persons. The chair is directing our committee secretary to uh, recognize our resource persons. Good morning. Um, welcome to our resource persons. They are the following. From the Department of Health, Dr. Rochelle Pambid, Dr. Manuel Valesteros, Dr. Joseph John Formoso, Mr. Edgar Hilarno, Director Roderick Napulan, Dr. Ronald Lau, and Mr. Vincent Sumerguito. From the PhilHealth, we have Dr. Albert Francis Domingo. From the Department of Budget and Management, Mr. Justin Buiser, Ms. Jamie Libuque, and Mr. Ariel Dairit. From the Professional Regulation Commission, with us is Dr. Melinda Garcia. From the Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Arturo De Leon. From the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim in the Now or Barm, with us is Dr. Shalmalin Ampatuan. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, with us is Director Aris Joseph Hegina. From the Philippine Dental Association, with us is Dr. Cheryl Del Rosario and Dr. Artemio Licos. From the Civil Service Commission, with us is Attorney Catherine Lumare Del Moro. And lastly, from the Department of Migrant Workers, with us is Mr. Paul Cabugao. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Distinguished colleagues and esteemed guests, in the agenda of the committee meeting for today are one bill of national significance, four bills declaring special holidays, and a local bill of uh, equal importance. In the interest of time, let us immediately proceed with the consideration of the bills and with the presence of uh, the authors of the several bills uh, we'd like to uh, accommodate. First, uh, the House Bill 2248, entitled An Act Declaring March 15 of Every Year as National Frontliners Day by Representative Stella Luz Kimbo, 2nd District, Marikina City. Salama, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your um, kind consideration. Magandang umaga po sa atin lahat. I filed this bill declaring March 15 as a National Frontliners Day as a way to thank and remember the heroism of the healthcare workers during the, the pandemic. Last March 15, 2020, we began calling them frontliners. And uh, if you recall, that was the first day of our lockdown. And uh, true enough, as we entered the war against COVID-19, they were our first line of defense. Huwag sana natin kalimutan na sa gerang iyan, ang frontliners ang promotekta sa sambayan ng Pilipino. 24-7 silang naglingkod sa atin. They had to leave their families for the sake of service, even sacrificing their own lives. According to the WHO, 104 Filipino healthcare workers died of COVID-19 in 2020 to 2021. They are our fallen heroes who sacrificed their lives for our healing and safety. Up until their very last breath, naglilingkod sila. Hindi man lang nila nayakap o nakasama ang kanilang pamilya. 
Until now, our frontliners are still facing problems in the health sector, such as low salaries and poor working conditions. Kulang na kulang din ang ating frontliners that even the DOH itself declared that it will take 12 up to 23 years to fill the gap in nurses and doctors shortage respectively. As we fail to address these problems, our frontliners are continuously exposed to, to poorer working environment. So I call on my colleagues to join me in remembering March 15 as the beginning of our frontliners' hardest battles. And in the words of our president, President Ferdinand Marcus Jr., kung hindi dahil sa tapang ng ating mga frontliners nung ikalabing lima or beginning the 15th of March 2020, Marahil ay tuluyan na ngang tumigil ang ating mundo. More importantly, declaring March 15 as a National Frontliners Day, this shall serve as a promise to our frontliners that we will relentlessly fight for our improved working for their improved working conditions and adequate compensation. Every year, as we remember their heroism, we as a nation must also remember to address their needs as a sector. Our frontliners serve with their hearts. They bring us to this world, take care of us when we are ill, and make sure we are comfortable until our very last days on earth. It is our duty to, to do the same for them. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Stella Luz Akimbo. Uh, we would like to, uh, of course, hear the views of uh, our resource persons from the UH, but before that, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Honorable Mark Go from uh, Lone District, Baguio City. Honorable uh, Miri Kua of uh, Lone District, Quirino. Honorable Eve Jenny Vicente Imano of Second District, Misamis Oriental. Honorable Ray Florence Reyes of Anak Kalusugan Party List. With us here, physically present, Honorable Joseph Gilbert Violago, 2nd District, Nueva Ecija, and Honorable Victoria Copilar of 6th uh, District, Quezon. Now, uh, let us hear uh, Director, Director Rod Napulan from Department of Health. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Kong Peter Miguel. And of course, to our sponsor, Kong uh, Stella Kimbo, good morning, and the rest of the House uh, of Representatives, uh, members of the Committee on Health. So the Department of Health, through the Administrative Service, highly admires and fully supports the intent of the House Bill Number 2248, or an act declaring March 15 of every year as National Frontliners Day, which aims to honor and recognize the immeasurable sacrifice performed by the COVID-19 frontliners in delivering public health, safety, and welfare services, maintaining public order, and allowing the economy to continuously operate. Based on the data of COVID-19 compensation claims that we gathered, there were more than 150,000 healthcare workers contracted with COVID-19 from 2020 up to present and already filed for compensation. There were 428 healthcare workers who died due to COVID-19, 151,934 contracted COVID-19 as mild and moderate, and 1,257 severe and critical COVID cases. With this, with this bill, we can uh, highly emphasize the importance as well as the efforts of all our healthcare workers, as well as for all of other uh, frontliners. So we respectfully submitted, Madam Chair, and fully support this bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Madam Sponsor. Thank you very much, uh, Director Rod Napulan. May we hear any comments from the authors or from the members of this committee? Honorable Margo. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, there is another uh, similar bill, although the date of uh, the celebration is uh, March 22, as against the March 15 of uh, Congresswoman uh, Kimbo. I would suggest that we allow uh, the proponent of this measure to sponsor the bill so we can discuss both of the bills, uh, Mr. Chair. Honorable, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Marco. There is a suggestion for the proponent to 
uh, sponsor also this uh, similar bill. House Bill number 6335. Okay. Uh, by uh, Representative uh, Wilbert Lee. Since uh, Representative Wilbert Lee is not around, Congressman Margo, you may uh, sponsor this bill. Also. Okay. Uh, in behalf of uh, Congressman uh, Wilbert Lee, I would like to move that uh, uh, the explanatory note of House Bill 6335 be adopted as the sponsorship uh, message of uh, uh, Congressman Wilbert Lee, uh, Mr. Chair. Second. Any objection? There being none, the motion is hereby approved. The House Bill 6635 is uh, part of our into consideration. So uh, we, without any questions, uh, with regard to our uh, two bills with the same uh, content, may we hear a motion for approval of this uh, bill? Uh, Mr. Chair, before we approve uh, the two bills. Uh, there are two items uh, that I would like to uh, uh, point out. First, uh, the date, uh, March 22 and March 15. And the other one is instead of calling them frontliners, uh, yung other bill is uh, to call them COVID-19 Filipino healthcare workers, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, if we note here uh, with the proposal of Congressman, Congresswoman Kimbo, it is broader in scope because it covers all frontliners, not only health workers, because we have a lot of people who got involved as uh, workers during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, like some military personnel, non-healthcare uh, workers uh, were involved also. So I think uh, we might just as well use uh, the term used by Congresswoman Kimbo that it should be called uh, frontliners instead of uh, COVID-19 Filipino healthcare workers, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, as far as the name uh, is concerned. On the other hand, uh, on the issue of uh, March 22 or March 15, what is the appropriate uh, date that we should consider? And I think uh, Congresswoman Kimbo has a better explanation of why March 15 is uh, considered as the time that we should uh, declare uh, as the a special day for our uh, frontliners, uh, Mr. Chair. Is it was the official start of the lockdown? Yes. So uh, is there a common ground right now that uh, the nomenclature for, as far as the title is concerned, should be a F National Frontliners Day? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. And the date. So uh, may I hear a motion for on that effect? So uh, if I may be allowed, if there are no more uh, questions on this uh, particular measure, I would like to move that we approve uh, the two bills, uh, 6335 and uh, 2248 with the uh, measure of Congresswoman Kimbo be adopted as the lead bill and approve the same, uh, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. Any objection? There being none, House Bill 228 and 6635 is hereby approved. We go next to the bill. Uh, Mr. Chair, so we will not come back anymore and talk of the same bills uh, i would like to propose also uh, as a motion to approve also the committee report uh, of uh, these two bills uh, as i stated earlier mr chair there's a motion for approval of this uh, committee second, report duly seconded uh, the motion is hereby approved mr chair I may I move also that all yes, no, um, members uh, present be made co-authors of the of this bill, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. There's a motion that those who are present 
in uh, physically and in Zoom be made as a co-author. Since there's no objection, the motion is here approved. Now we go next to the bill, uh, House Bill 7947, an act declaring May 23 of every year as National Cervical Cancer Screening Day by Representative Stella Luz Kimbo. Okay. Salamat muli, Mr. Chair, for um, taking up this measure. Every year, 7,897 Filipinas are diagnosed with cervical cancer and 4,052 die from the disease. This roughly translates to about 12 deaths per day. Cervical cancer often goes undetected until its advanced stages when women are left with limited options. But this should not be the case. Cervical cancer is a preventable disease and early screening is crucial to co combat it. More than awareness, early detection through screening is necessary. While the month of May has, has been declared a Cervical Cancer Prevention Awareness Month, there should be a day designated to encourage women to be screened. So the establishment of May 23 as a National Cervical Cancer Screening Day will complement the efforts of DOH and bring us closer to the goal of eliminating cervical cancer in the Philippines. The proposed bill will encourage government agencies and LGUs to conduct public education and awareness campaigns to motivate women to get screened. It will also mandate the provision of free or low-cost screening services to underserved and marginalized populations. Through early detection, we can prevent disease progression and put forward cost-effective interventions. Pag may early screening, mas maaga natin maagapan ang sakit na maaaring pagdaanan ng ating mga kababaihan. Also, by providing support to women through accessible screening programs and information campaigns, we empower them to take charge of their health. So with the help of the members of this com committee, we will not only support women to lead healthier lives, we will also invest in the health of the backbone of our families, communities, and our economy. I respectfully submit for consideration to the Committee on Health the approval of House Bill 7947, also known as the National Cervical Cancer Screening Day Act of 2023. Sama-sama po tayo para sa kalusugan ng kababaihan at ng bayan. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Stella Luz Kimbo. And now we'll hear uh, the, the DOH's uh, com recommendation, comments. Mr. Vincent Sumer. Let us hear Mr. Vincent Sumeriquito. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members and distinct members of the House. Uh, the Department of Health recognizes the importance of intensifying cervical cancer initiatives in the country, knowing that currently cervical cancer is the second leading cancer among women here in the Philippines and is also considered as one of the preventable and treatable cancers through vaccination and early screening. As such, under Proclamation 368, Z Series of 2003, and Republic Act 11215, or the National Integrated Cancer Control Act and its implementing rules and regulations, the celebration of Cervical Cancer Awareness Month every May of each year is one critical national advocacy that highlights various ways in managing cervical cancer that include HPV vaccination, early cervical screening and treatment of precancerous lesions, and provision of accessible and affordable cervical cancer drugs. Given this and other logistical and human resource needs, the Department of Health welcomes initiatives of our stakeholders and partners that are streamlined with our current national celebrations in line with the existing cancer law. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Vincent Sumerikitu. And uh, at this point, uh, we'd like to hear any comments from the committee, from the authors. Since uh, there's none, we may, I may hear, you may, I may approval of this bill. Motion for approval. Mr. Chair, you are looking at me. It's exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, to fast yes, uh, Mr. I Chair, know you're... considering that this is a very laudable and uh, uh, Bill, Mr. Chair, I would like to move, uh, of course, uh, after hearing the Department of Health on their uh, approval of this measure, I would like to move that we approve House Bill 7947, 
uh, wala na siguro ang amendment dito. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I move for its approval, uh, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. There's a motion duly seconded. An act declaring May 23 of every year as National Cervical Cancer Screening Day by Representative Stella Luz Kimbo is hereby approved. Mr. Now, Chair? Yes, Honorable Arne Roque. May I make a motion that uh, all the representatives who are present here and on Zoom be made co authors of this bill with the uh, permission of yes. the author? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. There's a motion that making the, the, the presence of our all representative via Zoom and physical presence would be the co-author of this bill. Uh, Julie seconded. So uh, it's uh, the motion is here by approved. I'd like to recognize the presence online of following members. Honorable Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez of uh, One Rider Party List. Honorable Carl Nicolas Cari of uh, 5th District Leyte. Honorable Joseph Jojo Olara of uh, 3rd District Cagayan. Honorable Baby Aline Vargas Alfonso of 2nd District Cagayan. And uh, at this point, we'll go to uh, House Bill 3036. An act declaring July 17 every year as a special non-working holiday to be known as the National Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Day by Representative Edward Vera Perez Maceda. Let us recognize uh, Honorable uh, Edward Vera Perez Maceda via Zoom. Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, and to all my colleagues. Um, one of the leading causes of death in the Philippines is uh, cardiac arrest, which uh, can be described in many ways, but one way of describing it is uh, sometimes it's an electrical malfunction in the heart that causes an irregular heartbeat or arrhythmia and disrupts flow to the blood, flow of blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. When a person has a cardiac arrest, survival depends on immediately getting CPR from someone nearby. Almost 90% of people who suffer out-of-hospital cardiac arrests die, if, especially if CPR is not immediately provided. However, in the alternative, CPR, especially if per provided in the first few minutes of cardiac arrest, within cardiac arrest, can double or sometimes even triple a person's chance of survival. It's worthy to note that uh, Republic Act 10871, authored by former Congressman Jose Lier Yang Giao, was drafted and lapsed into law on July 17, 2016. The law known as the Samboy Lim Law and the Basic Life Support Training in Schools Act mandates both private and public schools to provide their students with basic life support training through the use of psychomotor training. RA 710871, passed on July 17, paved the way for a CPR-ready Philippines. This is because of this, as this bill proposes to declare July 17 of every year, I'd like to um, make a short amendment as a special working holiday. Uh, being the chair of the Committee on Revision of Laws, several uh, holidays have been uh, referred to my committee, and we have already passed into law several holidays. And uh, except in uh, certain circumstances, um, we, have, we, we see the, the uh, importance of uh, making the holiday uh, a working holiday instead of a non-working holiday because the uh, the echo or the, the employers uh, association uh, as well as uh, the NEDA and uh, um, the DOF have uh, intimated during our hearings in my committee uh, that uh, the, the, the economic impact of making a non-working holiday so I, I will I will agree to or I will agree to making this a special working holiday para hindi naman ma, 
mahirapan ang ating mga empleyado at mga kababayan. So thank you Mr. Chair and uh, I hope uh, my colleagues can, in, in the Committee on Health may support me in this uh, in this bill. Ram, salamat po. Salamat po, Representative Edward Vera Perez Maceda, 4th District, Manila. At this point, I'd like to recognize the presence via Zoom of Honorable Romulo Kid Peña of 1st District, Makati. So we'd like to hear our resource person, Dr. Ronald Law from Department of Health. Pleasant morning, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, especially to uh, Congressman Edward Perez Maceda for uh, sponsoring this bill and to the distinguished uh, uh, members of this Committee on Health. The Department of Health uh, recognizes the public health burden of cardiac arrest and the health, economic, and social repercussions that it brings not only to Filipino individuals, but also to their families and loved ones. Thus, the Department of Health welcomes uh, this House Bill 3036 to declare 20, July 17 of every year as National Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Day. CPR, when done in a timely and proper manner, can prolong the lives of many Filipinos. Cardiac arrest can happen anytime inside the house, in public places, where medical expertise and equipment may not be sufficient. But with CPR, with many people knowing how to do it, we can increase the chances of survival of many Filipinos. This proclamation, uh, we believe, will create a wider awareness of the value of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, the importance of being CPR ready in the Filipino society, at home, in the workplace, in public places, and the need for strategic interventions to allocate resources and improve the practice of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The Department of Health fully supports this move and vows to strengthen our policies, plans, and programs to concretize the vision of a CPR-ready Philippines. We will sustain our good relationship with our stakeholders and will continuously allocate resources to institute a more comprehensive public health program to this end. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, Dr. Ronald Law from uh, Department of Health. So, uh, any uh, comments from the committee? Do uh, Representative Marco? Yeah, well, if there are no objections, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to move uh, for the approval of House Bill 3036 as amended by the proponent of this bill, making it now a special working day to be known as the National Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Day, Mr. Chair. I so move, uh, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. There's a motion duly seconded. Any objection? There being none. An act declaring July 17th of every year a special working day to every to be known as the National Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Day by Representative Edward Vera Perez Maceda is hereby approved as amended. We may proceed with House Bill. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, Maraming salamat po. Honorable uh, Edward Maceda. Maraming salamat po kung mamarapatin ng mga kasamahan kong uh, mambabatas na nandiyan ngayon at sa Zoom kung uh, na maging co-principal author ay uh, uh, ikalulugod ko po. Here's a motion. Second, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, duly seconded. The inclusion of all the present at the presence of all members here via Zoom or physical presence as a co-author of this bill is hereby approved. Salamat po. Thank you. Walang ano man po. Thank you, Kong Edward. Salamat, Kong Mark. As we move on, uh, we'll go to a uh, one local bill. House Bill Number Eight One Nine Zero, an Act establishing a specialty hospital in municipality of Lupao, Province of Nueva Ecija, to be known as the Lupao Doctor Eliotario Arviolago Mother and Child Medical Center, 
and appropriating funds therefore by representative joseph gilbert violago second district Nueva Ecija. uh thank you very much mr chair good morning to my colleagues and to our resource speakers uh mr chair i'm sponsoring house bill 8190 this bill six to create a 100 bed specialty hospital in the municipality of Lupau, province of Nueva Ecija, to be known as the Lupau Mother and Child Medical Center, which shall be under the direct control and supervision of the Department of Health. The proposed specialty hospital is envisioned to cater specifically for the care of mothers, women, and children, and all their medical needs. Mr. Chair, according to the 2020 PSA census, the province of Nebesi has 2.3 million inhabitants. As for the local government units comprising the second district of Nebesi, the total population is around half million. However, at present, there are no specialty hospital dedicated to mothers and children in the locality. For this reason, uh, the, this, the constituents are forced to travel to other places, thus incurring additional expenses because the current healthcare system in the area cannot accommodate all the patient's needs, especially the care that only specialty hospitals for mother and children can provide. Mr. Ch thus, Mr. Chair, it is with great hope and uh, that my constituents, especially the mothers and women and children in the in Nevesia and neighboring areas will have access to quality, safe, and affordable medical care. In view of foregoing, uh, Mr. Chair, this representation seek the immediate passage of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Joseph Gilbert Bialago. Let us hear now our resource person from Department of Health, Mr. Julius Cesar Castillo. Good morning to the committee chairperson and to all honorable representatives present. Uh, the DOH acknowledges and supports the intent of House Bill Number 8190 establishing the Lupao Dr. Eliotario R. Violago Mother and Child Medical Center as filed by Representative Joseph Gilbert Violago of the 2nd District of Nueva Ecija and recommends further assessment of the measure. The department will submit its recommendations through an official position paper signed by the Secretary of Health. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Julius Castillo. At this point, uh, Mr. Chair, here may we know the initial uh, position of the Department of uh, Health prior to the official document that will be submitted uh, so we can act uh, today, Mr. Chair? Mr. Castillo, you may answer the question. Uh, may I request a moment lang po, uh, just to... Uh, discuss with uh a moment lang po uh well we will get get back to you uh, sir in a few minutes any other comments from the members or the committee or the author Hong Joseph, may I ask, uh, you have already identified uh, a place for the establishment of the yes, Mr. Child, Chair, uh, medical center. There's a uh, dedicated uh, lot uh, for this uh, purpose, Mr. Chair. And a, uh, more than one hectare, Mr. Chair. Okay, that's good. And you think that uh, you can get funding from uh, uh, the government through uh, the GA, probably. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, the the lot is uh, will be donated by by the by the family, Mr. Chair, to the DOH, so that uh, only the funds for the hospital yes. will be needed, but so for, uh, only, for the, uh, only for the hospital. construction, but not for uh, acquiring the, the lot, Mr. Chair. Oh, that's good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other? So uh, we may go back to our resource person, Sir Julius Castillo. Uh, 
We're waiting uh, one minute suspension for this session. If I may, may I add, Mr. Chair? Actually, Just proceed. Uh, Just the session resume, Honorable Violago. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, uh, currently the proposed site uh, is also being used because it's a three hectare uh, uh, lot. Uh, currently, it's also being used as a isolation area of, of the second district. Uh, we're in uh, portable containers. Uh, we're built in that site for isolation uh, due to the COVID pandemic. I think there are some five or six containers right now there. So if we're going to uh, practically use the whole lot uh, as for medical uh, services, it's very ideal, Mr. Chair. So uh, from DOH, still <laughs> we're waiting for their uh, comments as to the question whether they have an initial stand uh, prior to the, today's uh, meeting. A uh, one minute suspension. Yes, uh, session is resumed. Honorable uh, Mr. Castillo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Apologies for the delay. Uh, considering that there are externalities that will have to be discussed with the DOH Exacom, uh, I apologize, but I would have to uh, uh, re uh, still sorry, uh, with, uh, remain with my earlier statement that uh, we will be submitting a position paper once uh, these concerns have been finished uh, to be discussed by the execom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Julius Castillo. Dewey, Honorable Marco. Yeah, uh, taking note of what has been mentioned by uh, the Department of Health, I, I would like to anyway move for the approval of this measure subject to whatever requirements that may be imposed by the Department of Health in the establishment of the Mother and Child Medical Center in uh, the municipality of Lupao, province of Nueva Ecija, Mr. Chair. I Second, so Mr. Chair. There's a motion duly seconded. So uh, any objection? They're having none. The, an act establishing a specialty hospital in the municipality of Lupao, Lupao province of Nueva Ecija, to be known as the Lupao Mother and Child Medical Center and operating funds, therefore, by Representative Joseph Gilbert Violago is hereby approved, subject to the regulatory requirements by the Department of Health. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. A one minute suspension. Mr. Chair? Yes, Honorable uh, Roque. Uh, may I move that uh, all the members who are present right now here uh, in and in Zoom be made co-authors of the said bill, of uh, bill number 8190, with the permission of the author, Mr. Chair. Session resume. There's a motion. Include the inclusion of all uh, present members. As co-authors, any second to the motion? Second, Mr. Chair. Motion duly seconded. Uh, inclusion of all the present members is hereby approved. Okay, so we'll go to the next agenda. And uh, that is the 
Bills Institutionalizing a National Oral Health Program. This bill institutionalizing uh, oral health program according to the National Monitoring and Evaluation for Dental Survey or NMEDS indicates that 87.4 of Filipinos suffer from tooth decay or dental cavities. Sugary, carbo-loaded foods and processed foods coupled with emotional stress during the pandemic have caused increased thank you have caused increased incidences of uh, tooth decay or cavities moreover the country's aging population which accounts 8.2 percent has also contributed to the demand for better and more accessible dental services in line with the republic act 11223 or the universal health care act the proposed measures aim to strengthen oral health services in the country by uh, scaling up essential programs and increasing investments to make oral health promotion, disease prevention, quality treatment, and care more accessible, equitable, and affordable for all Filipinos. As proposed, the bill provides for oral health services in every region of the country through the Centers for Health Development by providing a basic package of essential oral health services for every life cycle group and by undertaking outreach programs and activities in unserved and underserved areas of the country. Public information education programs on oral hygiene and training and capability programs for oral health providers in both public and private hospitals. To this end, the Oral Health Division under Department of Health shall be strengthened. Oral Health Units shall be established in every rural health unit, which shall be composed of public health dentist and a trained barangay health worker who shall serve as a dental aid and assist in oral health care promotion. Moreover, the proposed measure incorporates oral health in the standards, licensing, regulation, quality assurance, monitoring, and evaluation of health facilities. For the information of the honorable members of the committee, the proposed measure is institutionalizing a national oral health program has been extensively discussed and subsequently approved in the 18th Congress. Unfortunately, there was not enough time when the plenary for the plenary deliberations. Copies of the bills and matrix relative thereto have been distributed to all members of the committee. So let's now proceed with the recognition of the authors and their sponsorship speeches. So to start off uh, with us here, um, House Bill 3162, uh, Representative uh, Josephine J. Laxon Noel. Uh, and Florencio Gabriel Benuel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, and my distinguished colleagues and um, our guests. To further emphasize that there's so much to be done, allow me to state more facts. The Filipinos oral hygiene and dental health is limited to simple brushing routines with any toothpaste available. Dental care is the least of our worries. Filipinos tend to downplay the importance of dental health and suffers the painful consequences of toothache or loss of tooth because visiting a public dentist could be a waste of so much time while a private dental practitioner is costly. The 1987 Philippine Constitution declared policy of the state to protect and promote the right to health instill health consciousness and ensure access and delivery of quality oral health, quality oral health care services to all Filipinos. With that being said, as early as 1963, the government has already enacted Republic Act Number no. 3814, which established the Bureau of Dental Health Services under the Department of Health. The Bureau was given the tasks of protecting the dental health and oral hygiene of Filipinos 
and the maintenance of an adequate standard of dental health services and the improvement of such standards. However, by virtue of Executive Order Number 119, Series of 1987, otherwise known as the Re Reorganization Act of the Ministry of Health, the Bureau of Dental Health Services was converted into the Dental Health Service under the Office for Public Health Services. In 2003, the National Policy on Oral Health by the DOH mandated local government units to implement oral health programs and covers policies and guidelines that apply to all government and non-government health institutions whose functions and activities contribute to the improvement of oral health. While the delivery of basic oral health care became the responsibility of the local government, oral health program is also not a priority of the LGUs. Oral health program was given its own limited budget. Sadly, it cannot meet the perceived oral health needs and treatment demands of the entire populace. Access to Philippine oral health related statistics have been very difficult due to the absence of an effectively implemented data monitoring system. This means that the government do not have a concrete basis to how much dental and oral supplies one community needs, leading to a deficient delivery of dental services. It is with the foregoing that this bill seeks the following, to reinstate the Bureau of Dental Health to monitor systematically and ensure that programs and initiatives are focused to address the dental problems and our health issues. To make dental and oral health programs one of the government's priorities by strengthening collaboration between the national government through the Bureau of Dental Health and the local government units. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I am respectfully counting on the support of the committee for the speedy and favorable consideration of this measure. Thank you very much. Representative Josephine Luxon Noel, uh, Long District of Malabon. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Luxon Noel. Yeah. Um, before we ask for the comment from uh, our guests, may I um, also um, raise my questions now so that they can answer it all in. in Please proceed with your uh, question. Okay, under executive order number 119, former President Corazon C. Aquino converted the Bureau of Dental Health Services into the Dental Health Service under the Office for Public Health Services, as I mentioned earlier. My questions are, what are the existing dental health programs implemented by the DOH? What is the ratio of dentists to patients? What are the prevalent diseases concerning dental and oral health of Filipinos. Because Mr. Chair, I, want, I would want to know what happened to the Bureau of Dental Services when it was converted to dental health service. And if the present existing programs are enough to improve the oral and dental problems of all Filipinos. Number two, currently, the Oral Health Division is under the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health, correct? Okay. Under the said bureau, Director 3 for Technical Integration has the primary duty to operationalize and lead the integrated primary care for oral health, correct? Okay. The oral disease continues to be a serious public health problem in the country and the prevalence of dental caries on permanent teeth has generally, was, has generally been high throughout the years. What are the objectives and targets of the said um, bureau to reduce the prevalence of dental caries? Is the director in charge for oral health division even a dentist? Number of dentists currently employed under the DOH? Who is currently the head of dental health service? Is he or she a practicing dentist? Are the programs and targets even realistic? 
Mr. Speaker and dear colleagues, I would like to point out that in the presence of a Bureau of Dental Services in the DOH, we shall have a one bureau that understands oral and dental health problems and issues of our countries. Upon its absence, we do not have, a re we do not have realistic programs to roll out to our constituency, more so the welfare also of our dentists in public health service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Josephine Laxon Noel. Before we proceed with an uh, answer from our resource person, we would like, uh, with the indulgence of Honorable Laxon Noel, we'll just proceed briefly to the author of the same uh, of the bill, uh, House Bill. 1487, Representative Maria Rene and Lourdes Matibag for her sponsorship speech. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me just add, as for my sponsorship bill um, for House Bill number 1487, this is to reiterate that through the years, our country has made gains in ensuring the promotion and protection of our people's health. However, several gaps remain including the lack of an institutional means of promoting and ensuring the dental health of every Filipino. Almost entire communities in the country suffer from two of the most prevalent of dental diseases, tooth decay and gum disease. With more than 92% of Filipino reported to be suffering from tooth decay or cavities, while more than 78% have gum diseases, we must find ways of immediate address on this concern. This proposed bill, Chair, aims to reverse the situation by creating a dental unit in each of the rural health units listed under the Department of Health as part of the country's overall primary health care strategy by ensuring through legislation that each RHU under the DOH has at least one dentist serving the priority target of dental health services. Filipino citizens will greatly benefit from early detection, prevention, and treatment of dental health issues, giving our people more reasons to smile. I just want to also include, Mr. Chair, that the dentist and the dental society here in San Pedro is very eager and aggressive in pushing this bill. Thereby, Mr. Chair, to my distinct um, colleagues, this immediate passage of the bill is earnestly sought in this committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Maria Rene and Lourdes Matibang. And um, there is a manifestation from several authors of similar bills, House Bill number 1104, House Bill 1945, House Bill 2520, House Bill 3986, and House Bill 5095. Uh, that their explanatory notes be considered as their sponsorship speech. At this point, uh, let us proceed with uh, comments. But before that, I'd like to acknowledge the presence via Zoom of Honorable Maria Vanessa Aumentado from 2nd District Paul, as well as the pres physical presence of Honorable Franz Castro of ACT, Teachers Party List. So uh, let us hear from uh, the Department uh, of Health. Mr. Dr. Manuel Ballesteros. Dr. Manuel Ballesteros. For the response as to the numerous questions posted by Honorable uh, Josephine Laxon Noel. Thank you. Uh, maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, and all the esteemed members of the House. Uh, if I may read the position paper of DOH. Yes, proceed with the position paper of DOH. So the Department of Health fully supports the aims and objectives of the aforementioned bills, which seek to strengthen the delivery of oral services and DOH's endeavor to achieve UHC in the country. Um, we recommend a shift from the traditional curative approach towards a preventive approach that includes promotion of oral health within the family, schools, and workplaces aligned with the Universal Health Care Act. The proposed bills aim to attain and set the overall direction as it outlines a concept of integration, 
promotion, prevention, and control of oral diseases and other health concerns with the overall health and access to oral health care. Here in the Philippines, oral disease continues to be a serious public health problem. 73 million po na Pilipino, they suffer from dental caries. 42% or 42% of Filipinos have not even seen a dentist and 50% kahit may problema na hindi pa rin sila pumupunta sa dentista. Um, we also support the proposed bills to amend or modify the Rural Health Act or creation of dental units in every RHU, the establishment of a dental home that will complement the provision of primary oral health care, uh, which is basically primary care, wherein services are delivered, it, the essential services are delivered continuously, accessible, coordinated with the health system, and in a family-centered way. So dental home also addresses anticipatory guidance, preventive and acute comprehensive oral health care, which includes referral to the dental specialist when appropriate. And the dental home is a better alternative and a more excellent option in providing health care than the conduct of dental bunot missions where infection prevention and control cannot be observed and implemented. Uh, uh, that's all. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ballester. Um, there were a while ago there were questions posed by Representative Laxon Noel. So, can you offer your position or your answer on that? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. Um, the creation of the Bureau of Dental Services was last 1963, and ever since then, yung health, yung health, uh, yung dental bureau na na parang na, na downgrade siya into uh, fa, ano, to uh, family health division. So right now kasi po, uh, nagka, dahil sa risk, nagkakaroon ng restructuring again sa Department of Health because of uni the universal health care law. So the direction of the Department of Health is integration, integration of oral health across all life stages and all health services. No, so uh, right now, you, one of your questions is, is uh, dentist leading the oral health division? Actually, ma'am, ako po yung nag-apply sa oral health division. I am a pediatric dentist. Ako po yung nag-apply sa oral health division. But when I got into DOH, there's already integration happening. Because uh, when you talk of primary care kasi, kailangan integrated na walang health issue left behind. At kadalasan po talaga, naiiwan ng oral health lalo na pag-programmatic kasi nga wala akong budget and oral health is really a last priority. But then ma'am, kasi sa integration, there are advantages. Kasi ngayon ho, bilang uh, oral health division ako because nagkaroon nga ng restructuring, ginawa po akong division chief ng child, child adolescent maternal health division. So there are advantages po kasi nai-integrate namin po ang oral health across all life stages across all health issues. Kaya mas napapansin na po ngayon ang oral health. No? Now, the chief division is under the director, three and director four. So pag decision making po, ang talagang merong capacity to decide are really our directors. So ako po bilang division chief ng child, maternal, oral health, nutrition, uh, more on uh, management and all the deliverables are met but decisions are made from the director's office. Thank you for that. To hear any reaction from our, uh, our distinguished honorable participant, Laksa Noel. So doon po ba sa mga directors ng linyo ay may dentista? Wala po. Exactly. Kaya nga po namin na gusto nitong bureau na to para merong specifically na a department or a bureau na nagko-concentrate po sa needs ng oral health. Thank you. Sir, Any sir, other comments? May, uh, may, may follow-up question lang ako. Uh, ilan po ang dentist natin sa buong Pilipinas serving itong mga iba't ibang uh, ospital at saka health centers ng ating gobyerno? Uh, 
Your Honor, uh, the statistics, uh, there's only one dentist for every 50,000 population. So, ilang po yung uh, dentista natin sa buong Pilipinas? 4,000. We have 30,000 registered dentists from the... Hindi po. Yung pong nagtatrabaho ngayon sa gobyerno ah, under yes. the Department of Health. Okay, uh, Your Honor, there are 2,276 primary care dentists, 2,276, and uh, 1,040. So the total uh, number of uh, primary care dentists is 4,445. And these are all spread all over the country. Ano pong pinakamaraming asang area sa buong Pilipinas? Ito ba'y concentrated sa mga siyudad, sa mga probinsya, sa munisipyo? Uh, Your Honor, lahat. Almost all dentists are concentrated in cities. Sa cities. Uh, oh. Kulang na kulang po doon sa mga GDAS, yung mga geographically isolated disadvantaged areas. Hmm. Kasi yung nabanggit po ninyo kanina, uh, Mr. Chair, na ang focus supposedly is to be preventive. Ano, yes, po? Uh, ano bang efforts ang ginagawa ngayon ng uh, DOH to ensure that we carry the uh, plan of uh, preventing the occurrence of dental caries, problem sa oral hygiene ng mga tao. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. That's why um, we are really pushing that every municipality or ano, has, a rural, has a rural health dentist. Kasi isang importante ho, there are three factors para ma-improve po yung, yung, yung ating oral health status. Uh, number one, uh, kung ano yung kinakain natin. No? So sugar is the main cause of dental diseases. Number two, yung oral hygiene, yung pagtutoothbrush ng fluoride toothpaste. And number three, napaka-importante po na bawat Pilipino mayroong access sa primary care. And this is provided by the you dentist. Wait. Kasi doon sa primary care, ideally po, dapat may napupuntahan ho yung, yung bawat Pinoy sa health center na dentista with a functional dental health clinic for prevention at least every three to four months. Kaya yung po yung tinatawag namin may dental home na may binabalik-balikan po sila sa rural health unit para matugunan yung prevention. Hindi lang puro, kasi ang nagiging nangyari po ngayon, para puro reactive, pag masakit ang ipin, bunot. And when actually, sir, what we are really promoting is, is preventable kung ma-reinforce lang yung tatlo. Hygiene, diet, and access to primary care. And basic primary care is cost-effective, madali, non-invasive. Kaya lang mo sa kakulangan ng dentista na train talaga sa public health, eh hindi natutugunan talaga yung needs nila. Okay. Uh, uh, palo, palo. Yung, yung uh, of course, yung dentista, marami tayong private. Pwede ba yung, uh, let's say, meron tayong bibigay na subsidy sa mga tao? Kasi kung sa gobyerno sila pupunta, eh baka mahirap kasi, ano, uh, una, kulang sabi nyo. Meron ba kayong budget sa DOH uh, tungkol dito? Meron ba yung time budget dito na in-allocate ng Department of uh, Health? Sir, siguro, kasi we are right now developing yung sa field health benefit package. I think Dr. Domingo will be able to expound on that as part of the solution dun sa financing, health financing. Thank Meron you for that. Uh, yes. Uh, pero sumasangayong kayo dito sa plano na uh, ito. Institutionalize yung National Oral Eye Health Program ng uh, ating mga kasama rito. Yes, Your Honor. Ang may reservations lang kami, Your Honor, ay yung Dental Bureau because that is not the direction of UHC anymore. Kasi there were efforts also na magkaroon ng Dental Bureau noong 2019. So nag-usap nag po si President Duterte at ang DOH 
And because yung iba nga yung direction ng UAC integration, ang bureau po is very programmatic, very siloed, at saka yun nga ma-isolate na naman siya, kaya ang ginawa, integration. So uh, yes, uh, yung oral health program kailangan talaga ma ma strengthen talaga pero yung baka naman dahil sa integration eh baka makalimutan yung nabanggit ni uh, congresswoman uh, Noel uh, baka makalimutan less ang priority or least ang priority na binibigay sa oral uh, hygiene program uh, uh, yes your honor uh, our recommendation is not the creation of a bureau but the creation of an oral health council Mm -hmm. that will really guard the interest of uh, oral health talaga yung cons uh, we can all uh, parang sila yung pool of consultants that can really help augment and the that. ones uh, that should lead that council which should be a dental practitioner oh kasi kung uh, hindi niya alam yung you know uh, baka mahirapan yes your honor yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Valistero. So we we may go back to further discussions, but before that, so we, so we see uh, the overall picture of this bill. We may hear our other resource person, uh, particularly from PhilHealth, Dr. Albert Francis Domingo. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, honorable members of the committee. Magandang umaga po. On behalf of Acting President and Chief Executive Officer Emmanuel Ledesma Jr. and our Senior Vice President for Health Finance and Policy Sector, Dr. Israel Pargas, ako po si Director Albert Domingo uh, to deliver a position, preliminary position of PhilHealth, which we will also submit in an official paper. PhilHealth commends the honorable authors of the House bills that all seek to improve the oral health of all Filipinos. PhilHealth recognizes the importance of oral health as fundamental to and integrated with many other organ systems of the body, the functioning of which will impact on a person's overall health. As of April 30, 2023, there are 732 PhilHealth accredited dentists. Current uh, data also indicates that approximately 60% of accredited healthcare institutions are private. Mr. Chair, important po ito kasi yung 732 PhilHealth accredited dentists are mostly distributed in private facilities. Pag nagkaroon po tayo ng reconciliation of numbers, kaya po tumitingin rin ako sa kodigo ng aking DOH colleague, they maintain the count of the universe of dentists, pero hindi po lahat yun accredited ng PhilHealth. Karamihan ng accredited namin ay nasa private practice. There are case rates, PhilHealth case rates for dental conditions, but almost all of these are curative and often inpatient. Kailangan ma-admit po sa loob ng isang facility bago pumasok yung case rate para sa dental condition. Tapos kung papasukin natin yung detalye, ito yung mga talagang, uh, in, in, kasi po in, in medical school, nakakasama rin po namin yung mga practicing dentists. Meron talagang dentists in hospitals at merong dentists in uh, outpatient. Yung mga case rates para sa mga dentists or procedures inside the hospitals. Now, upon cursory review of the bills under consideration, PhilHealth supports and would like to highlight the citation of an integrated and comprehensive approach to health in general and the primary healthcare approach to health service delivery in particular. The Universal Healthcare Act, RA 11223, already guarantees that, open quotation, Every Filipino shall be granted immediate eligibility and access to care for medical, dental, mental, and emergency health services, provided that the goods and services to be included shall be determined through a fair and transparent HTA process. Close quotation. Ito po ay Section 6A ng RA11223. Thus, Mr. Chair, even under the current legal framework, PhilHealth is already mandated to expand its benefits as regards dental services. As to how, the UHC Act is also instructive for it has instructed PhilHealth to implement what we call a comprehensive outpatient benefit package, which we now call Consulta Plus. Meron pong published PhilHealth circular available on the internet, which we can provide a copy to the committee, or it actually in other hearings po na, na mention na po namin yan, the Consulta Plus uh, package. Consulta Plus could be expanded to include primary dental care, subject to additional resources that may be provided, of course, by the Honorable Congress. Now, a fair and transparent process to benefit development has three key elements provided for by law. One, 
the development of standard clinical practice guidelines to be approved by DOH in accordance with Section 27C of RA 11223. Two, a positive recommendation by the Health Technology Assessment Council for the development of any benefit package by PhilHealth according to Section 34A of RA 11223. And three, actuarial and feasibility studies by PhilHealth according to Section 21 of RA 7875 as amended, yung pong charter, National Health Insurance Act. These principles we have mentioned are reflected in the language proposed by Section 17 of House Bill 1104, to which we interpose no objection and may even suggest language to strengthen the provision further. As mentioned, the fair and transparent process of benefit development begins with the development of standard clinical practice guidelines. Kailangan po namin malaman kung ano babayaran namin. Ang mahirap kasi kung walang clinical practice guidelines, and um, I am really happy po that the chair himself is also a physician. Alam po ng mga parang ambiroan po eh, there are as many approaches to medical practice as there are doctors. <laughs> Sumusunod lang po kami kung merong CPG, so yun yung pinaka nagiging quote-unquote batas. And it's not even binding, no? It's, it's just the standard of care that must be done. We need to have standard CPGs to be approved by DOH. Now, PhilHealth is interested in how the institutional arrangements leading to CPG development will unfold. Will there be a bureau for oral health, which could signal a vertical disease program focused arrangement distinct from how we see the DOH to be implementing now an integrated approach to CPGs through the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau. Mr. Chair, ang ano lang po namin dito observation, if Congress in its wisdom will grant the, uh, the formation of a vertical bureau for oral health, what stops other disease programs from requesting for bureaus? What stops us from creating a bureau for psoriasis, a bureau for tuberculosis, a bureau for maternal and child care? They might start coming po and filing bills, and then we will be faced with a deluge of proposals, which could all be useful. But in health systems practice, usually the vertical approach is done to high burden conditions. Example po, tuberculosis. That's why we have a national TB program. So yun po talaga yung magiging uh, birabantayan ng PhilHealth. Sino yung magsasabi sa amin kung ano yung clinical practice guidelines? Yun po ba ay bureau? Or will there be a council of expert and patient representatives similar to how Congress has approached HIV AIDS? Meron po tayong Philippine National AIDS Council. Meron po tayong Mental Health Council. Meron rin po tayong National Integrated Cancer Control Council. So meron na po tayong models and legislation that we can follow. The councils that I have mentioned operate, uh, they are outside the DOH, but they have secretariats inside the DOH. Um, paumanhin po, Mr. Chair, pero kaya rin ako detailed mag-explain kasi I used to be Director 3 of the DPCB before I was seconded to PhilHealth. So this is very uh, familiar to me how we operate. Yun pong council, they are composed of experts in their field. So you have oncologists in the Cancer Council, you have psychiatrists in the Mental Health Council, you have infectious disease practitioners in the HIV Council. Ang pinagkaiba po kasi kapag council versus nasa loob ng DOH, Ang salary grade po ng gobyerno, as we know, is not enough to convince many of the internationally published and well-known experts to actually join the service. Most of them are private practitioners. But if they are part of a council, they gladly accept honoraria, they are able to provide advice na pinoprocess nung division na nasa loob ng DPCB. That's how they operate po, the DOH now. Now, having mentioned that, again, from the PhilHealth perspective, we're just waiting kung sino ba yung magsasabi sa amin kung ano yung CPG na gagamitin para popondahan ng PhilHealth. Either way or otherwise, PhilHealth is interested on who we shall be working with regarding the CPG. We leave this to the wise discretion of the House. Balikan ko lang po yung numbers. So, as of April 30, there are 732 accredited PhilHealth accredited dentists, most of, most of which are distributed in private healthcare institutions. Uh, I heard po from our colleague from DOH that overall, it's a larger number practicing 4,445. And although my colleague did not manifest it into the record, he might wish to confirm this, although nakito ko yung kodigo niya. Uh, 630 are private. And then 3,815 are government dentists. Ang tinatanong po ni Representative Go. If you notice, the number of accredited PhilHealth dentists is lower than the number of accredited. 3,000, uh, sorry, than the number of government dentists. Tatlong libo at walong daang government dentists. Pero ang overall accredited ng PhilHealth, private plus government, ay 732. 
ngayon, yung pong private dentist, 630, mas maliit. So actually, kung hihimay-himayin natin, lumalabas at yun ang basa namin, mas maraming private dentists ang accredited ng PhilHealth. As to what the reasons are, kung bakit ganun po, uh, medyo kailangan natin himayin yun. But moving forward, yung consulta plus na binanggit ko po earlier, yun po yung comprehensive outpatient benefit. Ano po yung magiging model sa consulta? Consulta has a provider, a primary care provider, which is not a doctor, by the way. Misconception po na medical doctor yung consulta provider. The consulta provider is actually a unit. It's a team composed of a doctor, a pharmacist, a dentist, and other members at primary care. Ang payment method po ng PhilHealth sa consulta is what we call capitation. The honorable representatives might have heard this kasi nagkakampaign din po kami sa mga districts for consulta registration for FPE. So the higher the number that you register and that you do first patient encounter with, minimultiply yun by 500 for government uh, para bang uh, consulta providers. Yun yung capitation na fina front load or balak i-front load ng PhilHealth sa mga consulta providers. As to how that amount is distributed between the doctor, the dentist, hindi po nakikialam ang PhilHealth. This is something which is important to explain kasi po ang misconception is 500 per person yung binibigay ng PhilHealth as ang baba ay eh, ang daming inaasa sa 500, CBC, ECG, etc. Ang capitation po kasi pakyawan. Kung 20,000 yung pasyente sa isang area, multiply by 500, yun yung ibibigay dun sa provider. Hindi naman lahat yung 20,000 mga ngailangan ng ECG. Hindi lahat mga ngailangan ng CBC. Pero baka may mga ilangan ng oral prophylaxis. Baka may kailangan ng bunot dun sa 20,000 na yun. Bahala na po yung provider at yung kanyang mga dentista na mag-usap kung paano sila maghahatian. Hindi na po mangingi alam ang PhilHealth. So, key message po to recap, kailangan lang po namin malaman sino po ba yung magpo-formulate ng clinical practice guidelines at ano yung magiging itsura ng clinical practice guidelines. At pag nakita po namin yun, isasubmit po yun sa Health Technology Assessment Council na magsasabi, for example, nagkukentuhan kami ng aking mga kapwa, hindi ko kapwa dentista, kapwa DOH, dentista po sila, sabi ko, paano po yung pasta ngayon? Gumagamit pa ba ng amalgam? Sabi sa akin ni Doktora, Dok, hindi na kasi merong convention na bawal ng mercury. Yung amalgam na alam po natin dati na mercury yung ginagamit, hindi na yung technology ngayon. May sinabi siyang ionic resin high technology. Bahala na si HTAC na magsabi kung yun yung... <laughs> kasi yun po yung role ng HTAC. Eh. Titingnan nila, tapos parang anayintindihan nila yon sabi nila, ah, ito yung cost effective. Tapos pag natapos si HTAC, tsaka papasok si Philet Actuary. Babalansihin na po namin kung kaya namin bayaran and hopefully uh, representative uh, and, and share, yun po yung papasok na pambayad dun sa mga private. Yun po yung tinatawag na subsidy. It's actually the capitation for primary care. We submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much for a very elaborate explanation, Dr. Albert Francis Domingo. Uh, before we proceed, uh, with a question or with a queries, clarification from the members, we'll just proceed first with another resource person so that we can see the overall picture. Let us hear the views of from the Philippine Dental Association, Dr. Cheryl Del Rosario. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and to the honorable members of this committee. Uh, on behalf of the Philippine Dental Association, uh, we are an accredited, integrated professional organization of the Professional Regulation Commission composed of uh, dentists, uh, dental hygienists, and uh, dental technologists. Uh, we fully support the House Bill uh, uh, institutionalizing uh, national oral health program. Um, according to the WHO, oral health has long been neglect neglected in global health. However, the good news is oral diseases are largely preventable. So dear honorable members of this August body, let us champion oral health by passing this uh, bill no, uh, to make sure that oral health services are within reach to as many Filipinos as possible and to significantly help our country improve their oral health. Um, and with due respect uh, to the author of this bill, um, to kindly include the Philippine Dental Association as uh, one of the stakeholders in the implementation of this bill um, to strengthen um, public-private uh, partnership. Uh, we are a strong 16,800 members. We have 101 chapters nationwide. We have 21 affiliate societies two integrated organizations. No? Although we are a non-stock, non-profit uh, organization, we have partners who can uh, 
actually help us no, in the implementation of our uh, oral health programs. And uh, there was a question no, um, a while ago regarding the dentist patient ratio, which is around one, one is to 50,000. Um, one of the main problems that we see here is because of the low salary grade being offered to our dentists. Uh, and uh, we already have a, a pending position paper uh, regarding this uh, to address this matter. Uh, that will be all, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl Del Rosario. Now we'll proceed with another resource person from the Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Arturo De Leon, via Zoom. Mr. Chair, while waiting probably from the Commission. Yes, while well, waiting I, for Dr. Arturo uh, De Leon, we'll hear uh, yeah, any yeah. comments. I would like to ask uh, from PhilHealth, uh, bottom line, uh, ano yung package na ngayon uh, binibigay nyo for dental cases? Uh, uh, ano thank yung, thank maraming, you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, you have, yeah. Ano, ano yung bottom, ngayon, as of now, given the situation of the country as far as uh, dental hygiene and oral hygiene concerns that we have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, as of now, it's mostly inpatient, so it's not even oral hygiene. It's not a primary care. Inpatient, those who are uh, admitted to admitted hospital. Admitted to po. hospital. Mga, may case rates po. Uh, may case rate. Uh, ano yung mga cases natin? Let's uh, say nagkaroon ng implant. Is that part of it or no? Um. Allow me, Mr. Chair, to just quickly look at my uh, list. Meron po tayong, uh, just to read, uh, for example, pulpitis, uh, necrosis of pulp, pulpal gangrene, abnormal heart tissue uh, in the pulp, uh, acute apical periodontitis of pulpal origin. Um, the dentist might help me explain what this is. Uh, peri so, so, yung mga yan, kailangan uh, ax, ano sila? Uh, implant, meaning, I mean, in in service, dapat uh, na-confine sila sa ospital. Opo. Uh, meron Pag uh, pumunta lang for consultation, hindi kasama yon. Wala po sa ngayon, Mr. Chair. Pero ang pinaka-problema natin nga, yung ano eh, yung mga ano eh, sabi nyo, preventable. How uh, can you prevent when uh, we don't encourage them to go to the dentist by not providing uh, itong ganito? Uh, yung ano natin yung yung mga parang operation na ito ang ginagawa ng mga dentista. Yes, Mr. Chair. Sa yung gum nila uh, na na infect or something tapos okay. na confine. Yes, Mr. Chair. So yun po yung binabanggit namin na moving forward yung pong consulta package doon na po ipapasok ang preventive oral care. Kasi po yung consulta package is really meant for primary care all conditions. So ngayon po kasi yung capitation is 500 per head, uh, pero there is only a fixed uh, 13 uh, para bang diagnostic tests and the uh, number of conditions na hindi pa kasama sa ngayon ang oral health. So dito sa konsulta na ito, how many thousands of uh, uh, yung in inallocate ninyo na worth 500 pesos per, uh, per month ito, no? Per year po yan, per, per year. person. Okay, so all cases ito. Ilang ang binabayaran ninyo ngayon sa lahat ng mga kasong ganito? Uh, the current data, Mr. Chair, uh, ang mababa pa ho kasi hindi pa ho sa full swing. Nasa 1 million Filipinos pa lang po yung nakaregister. Sa so consulta. whether 1 million yan. So anytime, uh, any, every year you pay 20 million pesos. That I mean, is, five, uh, uh, nito, uh, 50 million pesos. O 500 million kasi 1 million eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. So you're spending 500 million uh, uh, because of this, uh, ano, itong 1 million na nakaregister. I regardless of whether the service is worth 500 million, you pay 500 million to this consulta service providers. Yes, Mr. Chair. Have you evaluated how many cases have been, uh, uh, let's say, serviced by this consulta service providers? Currently, Mr. Chair, the numbers we have uh, do not yet uh, show the, the services, the actual kumbaga, cases, yung diseases na sineservice po nila. Um, hindi pa po namin na abot yun. Nasa level pa po kami nung what we call first patient encounter or health screening. Yeah, but you have been paying 500 million every year since you have... Uh, uh... Hindi pa naman po, Mr. Chair. No, no. The, the number, the 500 million, the estimate is correct. But in actual disbursements, uh, unfortunately, mababa pa po yung disbursement. Yeah, but if the number registered is 1 million... It will go up. 
uh, then you pay 500 each. Sa ngayon, how much ang binabayaran niyo? How many invest na 1 million? Ilan ang ano? Uh, I do not have the exact number, Mr. Chair, but I can look it up. Uh, hindi pa po, definitely malayo pa po tayo dun sa 500 uh, million. So when do you say that uh, you will now pay for 500,000 people mm -hmm. or 200,000 people? Meron bang triggering point that this is uh, uh, the number that you will pay uh, every every year? Meron, meron po, Mr. Chair. So, for example, if uh, if in the district, uh, 20,000 people, wag naman 20,000, kahit 2,000 muna, 2,000 people show up and mm -hmm. have their FPE, what we call it, first patient encounter, bibigyan na po sila ng 40% of 500. First tranche po yun, front loading. So, so kailangan mag, uh, ano sila, actual patient ito. Yes, sir. So, actual and these are reported po. by the service providers. Yes, po. There's an EMR where their mm. their details are captured. Uh, actually, they're required to take a photo. Tapos papasok po yun sa Phil Health database. So, without uh, reporting to this consulta service provider's office uh, for consultation, you don't pay. Only That's those, correct. yun, yun. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, yun yung cost natin, 500. And okay. they can go uh, anywhere. Uh, based yung available areas ninyo na merong consulta service provider. By, by law, Mr. Chair, by the UHC Act, they can choose, Filipinos can choose your provider Anywhere. of choice. But once you choose that provider, you have to stay with that provider for the year. Mm -hmm. Kasi po, aalagaan kayo ng doktor eh. Kung siya po talaga yung doktor ninyo at panatag na kayo sa kanya, the whole year, sa kanya na po kayo. Sa Baguio po, meron ng consulta doon? Uh, yes, we were just there a few weeks ago. Meron pong consult the providers. Pero public po. Public. Ah, public. Saan yun? Hindi ko, uh, I can look the details. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sige. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And, but uh, we'll go back to our source person from CHED, uh, Dr. Arturo De Leon. Uh, good morning, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, members of this August body and all of the rest of the resource uh, persons. Uh, as of now, the uh, CHED TCD has yet to finalize our position paper on this matter. However, allow me just to, to share with you what we have been uh, discussing about these um, endeavors, particularly the institutionalizing of a national oral health programs uh, as uh, uh, provided in the uh, proposed bill. We support, we support such kind of uh, legal endeavor uh, in fact, uh, with the help of other members of the, uh, the, the council, we uh, have encouraged the 31 uh, dental schools to put more premium on uh, public health dentistry. Uh, with the adoption of the universal health care in the curriculum enhancement of those dental colleges, we are now uh, pushing the envelope of um, dental service um, which is actually concentrated on clinical practice of the deep various disciplines uh, to uh, a better and more relevant um, community dentistry uh, uh, aware uh, dentist. No? Um, a lot of our products, a lot of our graduates are were trained on uh, how to practice uh, the clinical, I mean, clinical dentistry. Uh, and uh, although we have uh, three uh, separate is distinct subjects on community dentistry. Uh, we uh, we decided to highlight, or so we say, give more weight on the how will be how will they appreciate their role as a licensed dentist in the implementation of a national oral health program. Uh, we, having said this one, we the chat is also encouraging all the SUC, the state universities and colleges as mandated by the uh, past previous administration to offer dentistry uh, in their locality. Uh, actually, uh, one of the concerns uh, raised a while ago is the, the dentist uh, per uh, population ratio of one is to 50,000, which is actually a very, very uh, one thing. Uh, although it poses a, 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 a big concern on, uh, on the part of the profession, uh, what um, uh, adds to the challenges is the distribution of uh, licensed dentists. No? A lot of those 16,000 uh, actively practicing, 
the Filipino dentists are concentrated in the NCR region. So implementation of a national oral health program might be undermined. So we encourage the Commission on Higher Education uh, is encouraging um, uh, local government uh, units to support their um, uh, local colleges and universities, particularly the state universities and colleges, to offer the College of Dentistry, uh, having their uh, graduates and uh, their students as a force multiplier in the national manpower for implementation of a national oral health program. Um, we also are very much involved the Philippine Association of Dental Colleges uh, is, in support, is uh, in support of the Philippine Dental Association in coming up with the uh, standard of care uh, uh, protocols and uh, finally the uh, clinical uh, uh, procedural guidelines that the, uh, the, the other regulatory agencies have been uh, looking for in support of their uh, this uh, kind of uh, programs, particularly the HMOs. Um, our observation is that, um, although our observation is that you are right, the uh, HMO is centering on uh, curative or uh, uh, the procedures that are already beyond prevention. If we can concentrate on uh, prevention measures and um, shall we say part uh, included in the in the package, that will be a, a good uh, a good approach in this national uh, effort to uh, increase the, the uh, awareness and uh, preventive measures, uh, particularly on the in in, in curtailing this um, uh, preventable disease. Also, we would like also to. Um, to take note that the uh, uh, high 70% or 80% of the Filipino dentists are private practitioners. And uh, a, a certain a small percentage of our, of our manpower are just are hospital based. A lot of us are working in a standalone uh, dental clinic. If the HMO providers would reconsider no, to include them in the in the in the pool of manpower, that will be a better um, uh, augmentation of the manpower for implementation of the national oral health program. Uh, uh, budget is is a number one concern. You know, I was I am a past president of the Philippine Dental Association, and a, and the government agreed to have a national dental health month celebration as part of public awareness on this global um, oral health disease, no, the caries and uh, uh, periodontal diseases. But we alone are the ones uh, raising the, the the budget, no, as a private in entity in uh, making sure that every month, every month, the Filipino people are um, uh, again and again revisit revisiting the uh, ways and means of how to prevent uh, 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 caries and uh, periodontal problem. Uh, usually, it's, uh, easily, alam to ni Dr. Che, um, pa five to six million no, every year. Uh, as a private entity, malaki pong budget to na we raised for every uh, every year just to comply with the government's uh, effort to uh, instill uh, awareness on this kind of disease. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we will be um, perhaps ready to submit our position paper through the Commission on Higher Education. Thank you for your time and we salute you for uh, your concern in this uh, national um, uh, efforts in preventing um, these dental diseases. Maraming salamat po. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Chair, maraming salamat po, Dr. Mayor, Arturo De Leon, Honorable Marco. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask uh, the gentleman from uh, CHED, how many uh, colleges and universities, particularly state colleges and universities, offering uh, dentistry uh, in the country? Out of the 114 SUCs, how many are offering dentistry as a course? Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Let's proceed with your response, Dr. Okay. Dillian. Uh, uh, sir, uh, since, since time immemorial, there's only one state university that's offering uh, dental program. That's University of the Philippines, Manila. 
But uh, during the ter term of uh, past President uh, Duterte, uh, a lot of uh, university colleges are applied, no? one of which is the Western Visayas uh, um, University in the South. No? Uh, that's just the, that's the latest add-on. So it makes two, two state universities and colleges that are offering uh, College of Dentistry. As of this record, there are 31 31 uh, dental colleges uh, offering uh, a dental program across the country, the 10 of which are in the Metro Manila, and uh, the rest are spread in the uh, Northern and Los, uh, Southern Luzon, and besides in Mindanao. So only do you two. Think we need, only uh, two. Do, you need, do you think uh, we need more uh, uh, universities and colleges uh, to offer dentistry? among these uh, state universities and colleges? I, may I respond, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, please. Um, I think uh, apart from the number of offerings, it's the distribution. Of the, so, but you agree that we need more in order to cater uh, yes. to the big yes, yes. Popular, growing population of the country? Because yes, if the ratio is one is to five, how many? 50,000. 50, uh, what is the optimal ratio that we should have? How many, Mr. De Leon? Uh, if, if, uh, if given the chance for ako, one is to 25 or 30, or lower. 30,000. Opo. So, bali, dapat bawasan ng 50%. So, that means uh, we need to double. Because we have, you know, uh, yung bill to itong doctor para sa bayan. Diba? Uh, we have asked all the... Uh, ito, we have a scholarship program for medical doctors uh, and uh, this provides also a return service. Okay ba sa'yo if we can come out with dentas, the dent, ano yun? Uh, dentista para sa bayan, similar to the doctor para sa bayan. So we can encourage more uh, practitioners who will work with the government. Maganda pong proposal yan. Uh, Maganda po ba yun? Sa United States po, ang ginagawa nila, they have what, what they call local champions. Each of the LGUs, uh, sa kanila model, will send their scholars to the, um, the various dental colleges and they will be uh, compelled to return back to their provinces. Yeah, so that's why I, I was asking earlier kung ilan ang ating mga colleges and universities offering uh, dentistry uh, particularly SUCs. I'm talking of SUCs here. How many are offering dentistry? Ngayon, nabanggit mo, UP lang at saka yung Western okay. uh, Business, uh, State uh, University in Iloilo. Uh, so, two, two out of 31 po. Two out of 31? Opo. So, I think I need to talk to all these uh, presidents of uh, the different SUCs para maisama natin to. So, we can address the big disparity in terms of uh, the offerings. Kasi kung yun ang problema natin, uh, dapat meron tayong strategic solution dito. Uh, kasi whatever law we will pass, kung wala namang support ang uh, walang graduates na gustong magsilbi sa iba't ibang barangay o isbang lugar at wala pang direksyon nito at wala pang concerned body to really manage it, eh, palagi ko, mahirap ito, uh, Mr. Chair. So that's another problem that we have uh, understood today, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. May, may, uh, may I add something, uh, Mr. Chair? Just proceed, Dr. Dillon. Uh, I, 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 I must correct myself. Kasama, kasama na po yung under permit stage yung Bicol University. So tatlo na po sila. Uh, Western Visayas, uh, Bicol University, and of course, University of the Philippines, Manila. Uh, may I just, may I just uh, give my observation? Uh, a lot of uh, graduates from the provinces would um, go into urban practice because, as you might be aware of, dentistry is um, a practice that is um, uh, founded upon uh, technology. So we need some uh, support, equipment support, technological support to uh, make sure that we have optimized our practice and uh, optimize our chances, opportunity to serve other people. Uh, 
So dapat siguro i, i, i encourage din po na ma, ma-equip yung stand alone hospital o clinic ng mga dentista. Meron kami dating proposal na pagka dental equipment o mga equipment on uh, on dentistry. Sana po sana ma-reconsider na po yung mga tariffs or taxes para ma-encourage yung mga provinces, mga 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 na provincial uh, dentist na to uh, uh, upgrade upgrade their dental clinic. Kaya hindi rin siguro nakaka nakaka-serve mabuti dahil because of the challenges ng mga equipment. Malaking bagay po ang gagawa ng Pag government uh, entity naman, mga SUC yan, nakalagay dyan, pwedeng basta't magamit para sa educational purpose, eh, they can be exempted from this tariff if they import from other countries. no uh, so, I think uh, yeah I think we have a lot of things to do as far as uh, uh, itong program na ito, uh, Mr. Chair. So, thank you. Mr. Chair, baka pwede yun na sama na rin yun sa mga private dentist na para pag bumili kami ng equipment, meron na rin pong uh, considerable ano, uh, support. Para magkakaproblema po tayo dyan kung popondo <laughs> natin yung mga private dentist. Uh, Kahit po taxes. Mahira po yan. Ang kailangan natin yung magtayo ng uh, mga dental services sa iba't ibang public hospitals. At para magawa yan, dapat merong isang... Champion. Ni Dr. Uh, ni Congresswoman Noel, eh, merong either bureau, it can be a council that will really drive this particular program. At yung mamamahala dyan, dapat uh, may kaalaman sa dentistry. Hindi yung graduate ng political science, kamukha ko, eh, hindi tayo pwede. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, Dr. De Leon. Salamat din po sa pagkakataon. Salamat po, Salamat po Dr. De Leon, uh, under Representative Marco. And uh, in fact, if I may add, We can look into uh, adding it into the specialty centers under the universal, uh, universal health care uh, system. So ngayon po mayroong 17, why not 18? And that is dental services because it's an uh, instrument-based uh, and uh, malaking bagay yung may center dahil improvement ng mga machineries and all uh, instrument under the dental health care. Well, we may hear um, from members of this committee if any other clarificatory uh, questions or comments. Siguro, Mr. Chair. Uh, after, Mr. Chair. Uh, after hearing all the discussions, and uh, uh, I, I would like to move that we consolidate uh, the how many bills? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, to consolidate uh, the seven bills, House Bills 1104, 1487, 2952, 3986, 2095, especially on the provision of either organizing the Bureau of Dental Service or a council that will really focus on uh, addressing the concerns uh, as stated earlier. Uh, I so move, uh, Mr. Chair. Before we proceed to the approval, uh, we have two resource person who are uh, waiting with us uh, early on. Let us uh, just hear a few briefly from the Professional Regulations Commission. Board of Dentistry, Dr. Melinda Garcia. Thank you, Paul, and good morning, Mr. Chair, to the honorable members of the committee and guests. Well, the Professional Regulation Commission, the Professional Regulatory Board of Dentistry, and other health professional regulatory boards came up with a one-page position paper. Uh, before I read, I would like to acknowledge the presence of my colleagues from the board, Honorable Sparagas, Go Lapete Gumanlag, and the chief of our PRB secretary, uh, Secretary Division Attorney Lobelika Bautista, who are likewise joining us online. The PRC supports the legislative advocacy to strengthen the oral health program of the government in line with the thrust of the Universal Health Care Act to provide all Filipinos access to quality and affordable health care goods and services. After review of the seven pending bills, uh, we have the following observations, comments, and recommendations. First, to address the long-standing problem on the country's fragmented healthcare system, the measure seeks 
to institutionalize a national oral health program to be administered by the oral health service under the DOH, while at the same time strengthening the centers for health development at the regional level. All plan strategies and resources related to oral health shall be implemented in accordance with the National Oral Health Program in order to foster an inclusive and integrated oral health care system. Second, the bill espouses for a robust and stable oral health workforce at all levels of the health care system through the creation of additional plantilla positions for all oral health professionals at the national level and establishment of oral health unit in every rural health unit. While these proposals are laudable, it is nonetheless recognized that the bigger problem is the limited supply of dentists in the local workforce. Based on the PRC data alone, there are 60,559 registered dentists, but only 31,660 are with active or updated professional identification cards as of March of 2023. Maldistribution is another concern as a major chunk of the practicing dentists are based in the NCR, leaving distant provinces like the Zamboanga Peninsula and Bangsamoro Autonomous Region with the least number of practicing dentists. More so while the other bills did mention dentists and dental aids in the establishment of oral health or dental units in every rural health unit, the role of dental hygienists in the delivery of basic oral health care services should be recognized in the proposed measures instead and for which there should be allocated plantilla positions for them as well. Re relatedly, the compensation of dentistry practitioners in the government raises also a valid concern as many dentists would rather go into private practice than to be in government service based on the prevailing compensation structure the entry level salary grade for dentists is only salary grade 17 for dentist two, although there is a plantilla position for dentist five, which is salary grade 24 compensation. There is very limited number of dentist five positions available. Third, in the true spirit of promoting and implementing national oral health program to the country, the priority and focus of the oral health program should be more on the promotive, preventive, and curative aspects of healthcare services delivery. This means that the program task should begin with the prevention and control of oral health programs and with strong emphasis on public accessibility to other oral health care services. Thus, the provisions in the bill relating to strengthening and the capability of public health systems and facilities, which include the allocation of adequate resources to ensure the provision of essential oral health service are of utter relevance and importance. Fourth, further, it is respectfully proposed that in the exercise of the policy making powers of the oral health service appropriate coordination and consultation be undertaken with relevant government agencies like the PRC and the Professional Regulatory Board of Dentistry, particularly on policies that would touch on the regulation of the practice of the dentistry profession. This is in relation to the proposed power and function of the OHS to coordinate and oversee the development of human resources for oral health with the PRC and other concerned government agencies. And finally, the PRC was again cited in House Bill 1104 in reference to the prevention of illegal practice in oral health. There is no objection interposed on this provision mandating the PRC to adopt an effective regulatory framework to prevent illegal practice in the oral health profession. Except for some corrections on the designation of PRC as the Professional Regulation, hindi po regulatory, um, Commission, and Philippine Dental Association, which should be referred to in the bill more appropriately as the Accredited Integrated Professional Organization for the Dentistry Profession. Uh, yun lang po. Thank you po, sir. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Dr. Garcia from the Board of Dentistry and their PRC. And um, we'll, yes, of course, uh, we'll uh, wait for the submission of your uh, position. We'll go next uh, briefly from the manifestation uh, of Dr. Shal Malin Ampatuan. The manifestation for Bangsamoro Autonomous Regions in Muslim Mindanao.
Dr. Ampatuan? So, uh, is still she around? So, uh, we'll proceed with the pending. Uh, any other comments about the the resource persons abuse? Uh, Mr. The, Chair, I just have one question from the PRC. Yes, so you may proceed, uh, Honorable Mark. Yeah, uh, sa PRC, may I know how many percent are passing dun sa uh, licensure exam for uh, dentist, uh, the commissioner? Uh, ano po, board lang po ko. Uh, uh, board, okay. Yes, ito, uh, uh, sir, ano po, um, ito pong kakarelease lang po namin last week, no? Uh, it's 691 out of 1,479. So that is 46.72%. Last November, December of 2022, 1,431 out of 2,341, 61.12%. Medyo bumaba po. Ina-analyze po po namin yung data. Pero ang tingin po namin kasi yung kumuha po nitong May, ito po yung first batch po nung nag-online because of the pandemic. So mukhang kulang po sila kasi may practical exam po kami eh. Doon po sila medyo bumaba po talaga. On the average... Uh... Uh, ilan po yung percent uh, for the uh, last uh, three to five years? Opo. Ang average po namin nasa 50% po. 50%. So yung lahat po nito, mga first takers ito, o uh, ano bang percentage itong mga first taker at, at saka yung second, third taker? Okay, uh, okay po. Combined po ito, no? pero um, um, uh, 75% po rito na pumapasa are first takers po. Mm -hmm. Yung pong aming repeaters, eh, I would say ako nga pa lang po talaga, mga 30% lang po. Ah, ganun. Oh. Although we have refresher course po eh. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Garcia. Thank you, um, thank you. Rep Representative Margo. We have a pending motion and that is the approval of uh, the said bill uh, which was uh, lengthily discussed and uh, subject to its uh, amendments and style. Do I hear any second to the motion? By, uh, Second, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, the bills discussed extensively, that is uh, institu institutionalizing the oral health program, um, subject to its amendment uh, with the lead bill, bill House Bill 1104, uh, as approved during uh, last date in Congress, is hereby approved. Thank you so much. Congratulations to everyone. Mr. Chair. Yes, Honorable uh, May I Arnie. I that okay. all the members uh, who are present and in Zoom be co-authors subject to, with permission with the author of this um, substitute bill. There is a motion duly seconded. All uh, members present is hereby uh, co-author of this bill. Thank you so much. Attorney. So... If there are no other matters, Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn uh, this meeting. Second, Mr. Chair. Uh, there's a motion of adjournment. There was a session for today. Our I committee second. hearing under a committee on health is hereby adjourned. Thank you so much.